Hi, I'm Bob Kendrick, and this is Storied, 22 stories in 22 weeks about the history of the Negro Leagues. Well, as I sit here on the incredible field of legends at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, in center field behind me is the legendary Oscar Charleston, whom my friend Buck O'Neill would say without hesitation, the greatest baseball player he ever saw. Now, he thought Willie Mays to be the best major leaguer, and most people concur. Willie Mays could beat you every way in which you could be beaten. He could beat you with his bat, with his arm, with his legs, and with his glove. And of course, Willie Mays' career began in the Negro Leagues with the Birmingham Black Barons. Mm -hmm. But Buck believed the man in center field, Oscar Charleston, to be the greatest baseball player he had ever seen. Oscar Charleston was an early era Negro Leaguer who could do it all. The consummate five-tool guy. Hit for power, hit for average, could field, could run, could throw. In 1921, Oscar Charleston led the Negro Leagues in home runs, triples, doubles, stolen bases, and batting average in the same season. If you were going to compare him to a major league contemporary, he had the defensive abilities of Tris Speaker, the tenacity of Ty Cobb, and the bat of Babe Ruth rolled into one dynamic package. And Obuck says he never saw a center fielder who could go back on a ball the way Charleston could. So he played a very shallow center field. And so you couldn't bloop it in front of him. And unless you hit it on a rope, you couldn't get it over his head. I'm sure many of you can recall the great running over the shoulder basket catch that Willie Mays makes in the World Series. Quite frankly, the throw was better than the catch, but the magnitude of that catch in the World Series, that's what everybody remembers. Well, all the old timers in the Negro League say, had that been Oscar Charleston, he'd have been waiting for that ball to come down. The legendary Oscar McKinley Charleston. This has been Bob Kendrick for Storied, 22 amazing stories of the Negro Leagues in 22 amazing weeks. Stay tuned for the next episode next week.